when we talk about deer rifles today, basically any gun that's ever been used to hunt deer, whether it's a Winchester 94 or a Savage 99, those guns are still being used. Uh, they're old school, uh, but the modern bolt action rifle, this is something that has evolved in really about the t past 10 years. You know, the bolt action rifle, you know, the basics were worked out by Bowser in about 1898, but it wasn't until the 30s and then the 50s and the 60s that the bolt action really caught on. The deer rifle from yesteryear to today, how has it changed? I'm not old enough to remember hunting with an 1886 Winchester or a 73 or a, a 92 or, or an 1895. But I know enough about those guns to say that, you know, they were guns with a lot of drop on the stock. They were made for open sight usage. They were basically somewhat sporterized military rifles. I think plenty of American deer rifles of yesteryear were plenty accurate, no question about it. But I think on average, a gun manufactured today can be counted on to be more accurate than its brethren that's 50 or 60 years old. The manufacturing processes have become more streamlined. The protocols that have been written down, written into the manufacturing by engineering standards, I think it improves everything. I think a, a hunter should be able to expect to buy a $400 rifle or a $1,200 rifle off the shelf and go out and shoot under one MOA. I think he should be able to expect that. So when you go to your big box store to pick up a box of ammo, typically there's a wide variety of choices. You used to see a lot of 308, 30-06, 30 243 entering the deer woods. Today that's kind of changed. We're seeing 6.5 PRC, we're seeing 350 Legend in AR-15s, we're seeing ultra-flat shooting cartridges like 6mm ARC. Growing up, I was always told, as far as deer rifle goes, uh, it's kind of an east and west of the Mississippi type thing. You know, west of the Mississippi, you're a 30 odd 6 guy. East of the Mississippi, you're probably a lever action 30-30. Uh, and that's kind of the way I, I perceived things to be until it was actually time for me to buy my first rifle and all I wanted was a 30 odd 6 Now that being said, I, I did most of my hunting on the, on the east coast. And that 30 odd 6 was more than enough for what I needed. A 30-30 would have done just fine. Um, but out west, you know, those longer shots, three, four, 500 yards are not uncommon. So I think the, the trend of, of modern hunters today are, you know, they want the best of both worlds. You know, no longer do they have to stick with one thing, a certain cartridge or a certain rifle. You know, you can expand your, your rifle build uh, to pretty much meet uh, any kind of hunt scenario you'd have east or west. One thing that's occurred across the American rifle lineup is the standardization, if you will, of the rifle stock on a bolt action rifle. It's pretty much standardized now. It's gonna be a straight comb on a bolt action. Once upon a time, rifle scopes weren't popular at all or even used. And so the drop at comb on a bolt action rifle from the 1930s or 40s was quite low by today's standards it would have been hard to mount a scope well enough to look through it properly. But nobody was thinking of rifle scope use back then. They were thinking of getting a good cheek weld and being able to look sight down the barrel, down at sight plane from rear sight to front sight. That was the primary aim then. Today, a straight comb is pretty much standardized and you can do a low mount rifle scope on there or a high mount if you've got a big objective belt. And you should be able to expect to throw the gun up, get a quick cheek weld, and get your eye positioned right behind that eye box, no problem. A lot of the new deer hunters that come out into the field, they may be wondering, what rifle do I need? What ammo do I need? And manufacturers have made it extremely easy to figure that out. Um, you go to a store now, you ask the, the guy behind the counter, what deer rifle should you buy? Uh, he's gonna be knowledgeable. He'll have some, some options for you there, more than one or two. Uh, you pick up any magazine out there, you'll be able to gain a lot more information on, on which rifles you should buy. The same goes with ammo. Uh, whether it be the, the Hornady American Whitetail or the Winchester Deer Season loads, all those loads were designed to effectively kill whitetail deer um, at whitetail deer effective ranges. 
And those cartridges are, are made to hit hard and, and pretty much drop all their energy right there on target. And that same technological advancements, you know, with the bullet construction, the barrels of the guns, the guns themselves, um, everything has just gone a, an extremely long way to make today's deer hunter have lots of options, but provide them with a very clear path as, as to what the best option may be. Some of the trends we're seeing in American deer rifles today is uh, smaller cartridges, muzzles are threaded, they either come with a brake or they're ready to accept a suppressor. That's off the hook these days, it really is. Look across the counter at any gun shop and almost every gun has a brake on it or has thread protectors and it's ready for a brake or a suppressor. It's pretty obvious to anybody if you look at the modern deer rifle versus the deer rifle from 100 years ago and you really notice that the weight has been cut, the size has been cut, the performance of modern day propellants and modern day projectiles are allowing the modern day manufacturers of deer rifles to produce a lighter, shorter rifle that provides the same, if not more utility than yesterday's deer rifles. It is a great time to be in the market for a deer rifle because you can go to a big box store and you can spend about 300 bucks and get yourself a very serviceable rifle. Now, it may not have the best lines, but it's gonna have a good barrel, it's gonna have a good trigger. And so there, there's this complete affordable rifle market. It really started with the Savage 110 because when Nicholas Brewer invented that rifle, designed it, uh, it was supposed to cost $110 but it turned out it was a great rifle. Uh, the fact that it was affordable, okay, that's fine too. Uh, but now most of the major large companies offer some form of affordable rifle. On the other side of the spectrum, uh, and it's always always been there, and, and that's the custom rifle market. And that is, you know, you get a really nice action. Uh, you get a really good barrel. Uh, you get a custom stock. And, you know, some guys like to do that themselves, others, turn them over to a gunsmith, and basically create a one-of-a-kind rifle. Really everything is available to the modern-day hunter with the modern-day hunting rifle uh, that makes it a better experience. It's all up to the personal preference of the hunter. And so the availability of all of these nuanced features that are on the modern deer rifle were just those were things that took us decades to, to develop. And the, the firearm manufacturing community, the companies that make these guns, that make the modern deer rifle and that make the modern deer rifle accessories, they just have done a wonderful job of responding to the request and the needs of the modern day hunter. And having said all that, what's interesting, there is still an opportunity to, to go back and experience, you know, you can literally take your granddad's rifle and go out hunting and really understand what it was like for him in the 1950s, 1940s, 1930s to go out there and put meat on the table because you quickly gain a real appreciation for how much things have changed when you do that.